Now, Armenia has accused Azerbaijan of trying to advance into its territory after fighting between the countries broke out overnight. Armenia's prime minister has phoned world leaders demanding what he called an adequate reaction. Azerbaijan says its troops suffered casualties in the border clashes, while Armenia claims several of its military positions had been attacked. Conflict between the two sides began in the 1980s over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. The ethnically Armenian region is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan. So we can cross to the Armenian capital, Yerevan, where we join uh, journalist uh, Maria Titsian, uh, who is monitoring events. Welcome, Maria. Um, what's the current state of affairs regarding this ceasefire? Uh, I don't know where you got the information about a ceasefire. There are rumors, but it has not been confirmed that there is a ceasefire. There is still intermittent shelling along the Armenia-Azerbaijan border after Azerbaijani armed forces launched a wide-scale attack uh, around midnight on September 13th. Right. Uh, and there, there have been um, uh, calls uh, from um, uh, two international uh, actors to do something, to, uh, to act adequately. How have those calls been met? Uh, with both sidism, unfortunately. Uh, it's very important to stress that this is not about the nagorno karabakh conflict. This is Azerbaijan attacking uh, sovereign Armenian territory, Armenia proper, uh, in several uh, attacking not only military positions, but also positions, but also civilian infrastructure in two regions of Kerar Kunik and Kunik. So this is this needs to be separated from the Artsakh issue because this is an attack on a sovereign country with recognized borders and the seat of the United Nations. So given that difference, what has prompted then this this uh, attack, as as you as you term it? Given that these tensions have been uh, bubbling um, for for many decades now, uh, and a deal was reached, why this? Because. Uh, Azerbaijan's President Ilham Aliyev, uh, after the November 9, 2020 ceasefire statement that ended the 2020 Artsakh war that had lasted for 44 days and saw the loss of significant Armenian territory and the loss of thousands of lives, uh, Aliyev has been insisting on creating a corridor uh, through Armenia that would connect Azerbaijan with its exclave in Nakhichevan. This was not part of the ceasefire statement. Uh, Azerbaijan is now trying to uh, successfully attain this through the use of force and because the international community has allowed um, a dictator like Aliyev to um, uh, use force to get what he wants and, and not, you know, this uh, parody that they tried to say, even with last night's attack, it was an unprovoked attack on Armenia and again, uh, both sides are being asked to de-escalate the situation. Right. And so given this, this, this both sidism, as, as you call it, from the, the international c community, is this, uh, is this a, a conflict that we need to pay more attention to? Because, as I say, it's been going on for 20 odd years through various deals, but it never seems to go away. Uh, absolutely, because this is not only between Armenia and Azerbaijan. We have to understand that Turkey, which is a very uh, close ally, a strategic partner of Azerbaijan, and we know that uh, Turkey has many problems with all of its neighbors, has been um, supporting Azerbaijan. Uh, there are larger regional players in the region. There's Iran, there's Turkey, as I mentioned, Russia. These are players in the region, and given uh, the, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the shift in geopolitical reality today in the international order, um, this particular conflict uh, could be uh, a tinderbox for a much larger regional conflict on the doors of Europe. Good talking to you. Thank you for explaining that so clearly uh, to us. That's journalist Maria Tititian uh, in uh, Yerevan.